Lawrence Schulte wrote in a 2006 issue of The Rostrum, Congress requires writing proficiently, research skills, organizational acumen, extemporaneous style, and a winning personality. Let's talk about congressional debate for about two minutes. Some debate events are one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -on -two, even three-on-three, -three, but this is not the case with congressional debate. While that may seem unusual, it might actually be more familiar than you think. It is, after all, called congressional debate. The event imitates a real chamber of Congress in many ways. Each summer, the Congress Committee of the ISSDA creates a set of bills and resolutions recommended for tournament hosts to choose from for their tournaments. Hosts typically select approximately four from the docket and announce which in their invitation. In the days prior to the tournament, students prepare to debate this legislation. Now, these bills and resolutions are more than just a single sentence, what you'd see in the other debate events. But thankfully, they're not as long as something offered on Capitol Hill. Unlike the other debate events, students in this event always get to select the side they wish to argue. If they wish to affirm all legislation that day, that is permissible. However, many students prepare both sides of the issue so they have twice the opportunity to speak from the floor. By rule, speeches in Congress are not to exceed three minutes, and these speeches are followed by cross-examination from the floor. Two things strike me about this form of debate. First, the proceedings occur using parliamentary procedure and are guided by Robert's Rules of Order. The meeting begins with a presiding officer, typically one of the students, calling the meeting to order. The chamber sets the order of the docket, and the meeting proceeds in a very systematic way. Once debate on a piece of legislation begins, students rise to be called on to speak when they want to, and then the presiding officer chooses a speaker using a system of precedence and recency. It's a practice that ensures fairness and order and facilitates new voices and ideas being heard. The other element that strikes me is just how much control the students have over these proceedings. They not only choose if and when they wish to speak and on which side they wish to speak, they not only set their own order of debate for the topics, but they also may recess if they wish and even amend the legislation and the rules. Of course, that all has to happen following the proper procedure. Congressional debate is a unique experience and one your students might enjoy.